Senator Wong. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, that was it. That was it. Uh, so I move, Mr. President, that the Senate take note of, I dare I call it an explanation, the few words. The pithy blurb by the, by the leader of the government in the Senate, and yet again we see, yet again we see the arrogance of this government refusing to be accountable to this Parliament, refusing to respond to public allegations, refusing to put the national interest first. And as they leave the chamber, ladies and gentlemen, this shows what this government thinks of the national interest. Walk out because you don't actually want to defend Australia's national interests. What a shameful group of cowards they are. What a shameful group of cowards they are. On the past week and including on a, on, today— on, on, a, on a point of order, Senator Colbeck. Order. Senator Colbeck, Senator Colbeck on a point of order. Thank you, Mr President. Um, on a point of order, Senator Wong's questions are clearly a reflection on senators on this side. Clearly, a reflection on senators on the, this the, side. The, and I'd ask you to consider whether I'm those going, comments should be withdrawn. Yeah, I, on, on my, 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 my ruling over the last 48 hours, which I have discussed with the clerk, was that where reflections are specific in nature, um, and if I might say directly identifiable to an individual, they're clearly out of order. Where they are made collectively in political debate. Um, they are not necessarily out of order. I will encourage senators to be careful with their language, but I do not believe that crossed the line, given my rulings of the last 48 hours. Senator Wong. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank you for your consistency. Well, what we have seen in this past week is Senator Cormann and Senator Payne having refused on seven separate occasions to assure this parliament and this Senate that one of its members, the member for Chisholm, is a fit and proper person to be in the Australian parliament. And now we've had it for the eighth time. We've had it for the eighth time, with Senator Cormann again refusing to assure the Senate that the member for Chisholm is a fit and proper person to be in this place. In fact, he refused to talk about anything at all. He refused to talk about anything all, at all. Do you know what he said? Gladys Lee was the elected member for Chisholm. Well, that's not an answer to the issues and questions which are being raised. His, his, he, he said the coalition won the election. Well, that's not an answer to the allegations, the serious allegations and questions which have been raised. We rec he said that their tax policy is better. Well, that's not an answer to the issues and allegations which have been raised. In fact, there were no answers. There were no answers because they have none. So we have nothing from the government when it comes to responding to the allegations, the concerns, the issues which have been raised publicly, including by members of the Liberal Party, uh, about the member for Chisholm. But you know, as inadequate as it was, we heard a little bit from Senator Cormann. Well, we've yet to hear anything at all in the parliament from the member for Chisholm. We are yet to hear anything at all in the parliament from the member for Chisholm. The Prime Minister has hit the mute button when it comes to the member for Chisholm. So the Prime Minister, Mr Morrison, and Senator Cormann continue to try and distract to claim that there's nothing here, nothing to see. They're saying that we shouldn't dare as the opposition to ask questions about the member for Chisholm. Well, can they explain this? Why is the media filled with reports that has, have their origins in leaks from the Liberal Party? Right. Why are the me is the media filled with reports that have their origin in leaks from your party, the Victorian branch of the Liberal Party? Well, the government doesn't want to talk about that. They try to distract attention from that fact by impugning those opposite in our efforts to raise legitimate questions. But whilst the government is, Prime Minister is trying to project a united front, the member for Chisholm herself is yet to front the parliament. And you know, there are Liberal MPs and senators who are horrified at the Prime Minister's failure to assure the national interest. We know from what has been written publicly and what uh, the Liberal Party members are saying privately uh, that there are concerns. Now let's remember how we got here. For weeks now, questions have been raised over whether or not Ms Gladys Liu's connections make her an, a fit and proper person to be in the Australian Parliament. And in an effort to address those questions, the member for Chisholm gave a TV interview, an infamous interview with Mr Bolt. And the, the facts are that the, her interview, her answers, simply raised more questions. 
So, in an attempt to deal with those questions, the PMO, the Prime Minister's Office, then wrote, wrote a press release that was issued in Ms Liu's name. And when that in turn raised new questions about why her statements are so wildly inconsistent, the Prime Minister gave a press conference where he claimed that the only thing that happened was that she had given a clumsy interview. He was trying to create the impression she was a political novice. Well, those facts really are not supported. She's been, the member for Chisholm has been an active fundraiser and an organiser for the Liberal Party for a long time. She, in fact, first ran for pre-selection in 2006. She was an advisor to Premiers Blaylieu and Napthine. Uh, and uh, she certainly has drawn attention over time, including in running a social media campaign uh, uh, during the federal election in 2016, including one in relation to LGBTI Australians. Uh, she subsequently denied doing so until faced with clear evidence. She's certainly been a prolific fundraiser. According to her own pre-selection application, which can only have been leaked by her own colleagues in the Liberal Party, she has fundraised one million dollars. It's a pretty extraordinary sum for somebody outside of parliament, let alone someone in the parliament. And if you see today's Herald Sun, the latest is in an avalanche of reports in the news raising serious questions uh, that the member for Chisholm should answer. Um, we see again questions around a range of activities, a range of um, allegations, a suggestion that references, for example, for permanent residency were promised uh, to Chinese students or overseas students. And we still have silence from the member for Chisholm. And I do ask this question, how are people supposed to have confidence in the member for Chisholm when she won't be accountable to them? She won't even speak in the place to which she's elected on the issues which have been raised publicly. Now, as I said, there, it's clear that there are many in the Liberal Party who simply do not have confidence in the handling uh, by the Prime Minister, Mr Morrison, or the member for Chisholm of these matters. Last week, we saw a report in the West, Aust West Australian anonymously quoting one of the Prime Minister's own MPs, and I note that it's Mr Hastie's hometown paper. There should have been concerns when she was chosen to stand as a candidate, and I believe those concerns were ignored. The Herald Sun also reported, and this is an extraordinary allegation, that senior Liberals were warned by security agencies that concerns about the member for Chisholm's links to the Chinese Communist Party made it unwise to pre-select her. These are not my words. This is what has been reported in the Herald Sun. It was reported that security agencies had concerns such that it made it unwise to pre-select her. Now, I accept, as a uh, given the position I hold and the positions I have hold, that people don't discuss the advice of security agencies. But when such an allegation is made of such a serious issue on the front page of a national uh, and serious newspaper, it should be answered. It should be answered, and it should be answered by the government of the day, because it is a very serious allegation that it, that's that. The Liberal Party was warned that it was unwise to pre-select her. It may be true, it may not. I'm not in a position to assert that. But we are in a position to know that that was printed on the basis uh, of sources, obviously, within the Liberal Party. And at no stage has the Prime Minister of this country responded to that allegation, and at no stage has his minister here representing him responded uh, to that allegation. That has nothing to do with her interview. It, was about, it is whether or not the Prime Minister is putting his political interests ahead of Australia's national interest. Government ministers have repeatedly in this place refused to assure the parliament that the member for Chisholm is a fit and proper person to be in the parliament. And it is obvious that the member for Chisholm will not provide that assurance. As I said earlier, much of this information in the reports that originates from leaks inside the Victorian branch of the Liberal Party. It's obviously, and you could probably tell me more than, than about this than <coughs> I would know, Mr President. It's obviously a very happy place at the moment. The government is trying to distract us from that fact by impugning the attempts by the Labor Party, by the media, to raise legitimate questions. And shamefully, Mr Morrison has injected race into this debate. He's trying to shield himself from accountability by hiding behind the Chinese-Australian community. 
He's suggesting that to ask legitimate questions when public concerns have been raised, not by the Labor Party, but by others, is an attack on the entire Chinese Australian uh, population. Well, I'm pretty confident. Well, if we follow his logic, every time you are, you're asked a difficult question constitutes a racial smear on all Chinese Australians. Well, I'm pretty confident it's not that his view. If I'm asked a difficult question, <laughs> or if uh, any other uh, Labor member uh, uh, who happens to be of Chinese heritage is asked a difficult question, that's not a smear on all Chinese Australians. And in fact, making this about race is a really grubby political tactic and a dishonourable political tactic. It might help Mr Morrison deal with a political problem of his own making, but it certainly will not help Chinese Australians who seek and are seek to and are making a contribution to this country. And I do also want to make a comment about the diversity of the Chinese Australian community. It's a very diverse community. You have Chinese Australians who are descendants of those who came during the gold rush. There are others, like myself, ethnically Chinese, or in my case, uh, my father, born in other parts of Asia, so the Southeast Asian community, the you know, children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren of the, the, the diaspora from southern China into uh, uh, Southeast Asia. There are some who, who are Taiwanese Australian. There are those who were welcomed by a Labor Prime Minister to, say, to stay in this country after the Tiananmen crackdown. And there are those who have come more recently from mainland China. It is a diverse community and it is a hard-working community. It is a community that does share a love and loyalty for this country, and it is also uh, an informed community. And uh, so many Chinese Australians can see right through what the Prime Minister is doing. I'll take that interjection. They can see what I'm doing, yes. I'm raising legitimate questions about Australia's national security, and I'm responding to your grubby, grubby political tactic of trying to make this about race. I will not take, yes, you, because you are part of it, you are a cabinet minister, and it is shameful. It is shameful. And as someone who's experienced racism firsthand, I do object most strenuously to the way you are using it in order to divert, divert, divert attention from legitimate questions that even your own Liberal Party have asked about these issues. And I'd make the point that the Prime Minister, Mr Morrison, is taking this approach in spite of warnings. In spite of warnings from inside his own party room, as Mr Harcher quoted, a senior Liberal said, this, was a, this is a profound error. This is a profound error. Like, there are many uh, Asian Australians who have experienced racism uh, in their time in this country. I do remember when Mr Morrison's hero, John Howard, called for cuts to Asian immigration. I remember what that meant for our community. And I remember uh, that there were some in the Liberal Party then who stood up against it, uh, but there were many who did not. Uh, I also remember that this Prime Minister, the man who now says you can't call, use race, and everything about um, this issue is about race, using the slur Shanghai Sam right. 17 times. 17 times. And then misled the country and denied doing it. Yeah. Misled the country and denied doing it. And, was that, and really, does anyone believe him? Did you li listen to him in the House of Representatives? So I, didn't, I didn't hear the question. Did anyone listen to the audio? It's as clear as a bell. And you can see he's saying, I didn't use either of those phrases. Well, I think anyone who watched the Prime Minister in the House of Representatives saw precisely what he was doing. He got caught out. He not, hadn't told the truth and he got caught out. And remember, this is the same Mr Morrison who, according to leaks out of um, the Liberal Party, urged the shadow cabinet to exploit community concerns about Muslim immigration. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is the bloke who's lecturing us about race. His own colleagues leaked on him and said he urged the shadow cabinet, the coalition shadow cabinet, to exploit community concerns about Muslim immigration. He urged the coalition to appeal to fear of immigrants. Well, everybody can see that this Prime Minister <coughs> is seeking to avoid questions and he is using a, a grubby smear in order 
to try and avoid answering legitimate questions about the member for Chisholm. Well, we're not going to be deterred nor intimidated by this obvious distraction, and I suspect members of the media won't be. I suspect members of the community are not, because ultimately we are judged in this country not by our ethnicity or our faith, but what we do, by our values and our actions. And if one is elected as a member or senator in this place, we are accountable to the people who elect us to the, through the parliament. That is the Westminster system. And as yet, we have not had the member for Chisholm have the courage and the decency to stand up in this parliament and respond to the very, very lengthy, very serious uh, set of allegations and concerns which have been raised about her, and she should. The member for Chisholm must be accountable, and Mr Morrison should make her be so. Yeah. Yeah.